Hey, what's up? Welcome to Degen Ed. That's degenerative education, meaning none of this is financial advice. Just me having fun looking at charts like the chart behind me, which is Applied Digital, ticker symbol APLD, which was requested. I did not get to making a video on it over the weekend, so I will cover it during the live stream. I also have BGXX, which is Bright Green Core. I assume that is uh, cannabis related, as it was a uh, comment on the... Um, on the uh, cannabis uh, video that I put out today. And then also Biora Therapeutics, they've got earnings coming up on Tuesday, so I did want to go over that. And I did want to do a follow-up on ChargePoint. And I also have uh, Nameless uh, suggesting that I go over SPXU and Matterport, so I will add those here. What's up, Nameless? How's it going? SPXU. Yeah, I was going to do a short video today, but I just had a bunch of requests for videos, so I just try to do those and try not to get burnt out, so I'll probably do another short video soon. And uh, yeah, and also if you are new to the channel, um, I do live streams every Sunday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern, ticker request live. If you have any requests, happy to go over them here. Uh, every Sunday, do this, and in April, I will probably also do this on Tuesdays and Thursdays, or maybe Wednesdays, maybe I'll mix it up, uh, but also uh, in addition to Sunday. But uh, yeah, I'm going to first go over Applied Digital, and then I'll go over uh, what Nameless requested, and then I'll try to bounce back and forth between uh, you know, what I've got here and the new requests that I get from the live chat. And so here, looking at Applied Digital, ticker symbol APLD. I can't remember the exact last time that I put out a video on them. I believe it was a um, uh, ticker request, uh, uh, a rough cut requests video. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to do a follow up because it was requested. And so, you know, I did delete some of the Fibonacci retracements that I had up here, uh, but I just kind of wanted to go over what I see in the chart. And really, you know, what I see, and I could be wrong about this, is it looks like bearish consolidation. You know, you've got this big move to the downside and then just consolidation over here. And, um, you know, so I do think that it could be breaking lower. Although, you know, I do say, you know, this consolidation here, we have been putting in higher lows. So maybe that's a good thing. Maybe this is not, uh, you know, as bad as I would think. I'm also not great at calling uh, bear flags. And so you see that. Uh, so I do think that is potentially good. Um, you don't, you see, higher lows in the RSI as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've just really struggled to get above, let's see, like 486, this yellow line here. And then from this Fibonacci retracement, uh, let's see, actually, um, let's see, uh, there was a line that I had drawn up here. I'm actually going to delete this retracement. Let's see. Um, yeah, so the 786 here, price is below that. That is at $4.61.8. Uh, current price closing on Friday, March 22nd, was $4.24, so lower than the 786, as you can see here. Um, I mean, but the closes have been getting higher, so maybe that is reassuring. I was trying to see, maybe there's this, Maybe there's a head and shoulders pattern here, an inverse head and shoulders pattern. Um, but yeah, I mean, really, I mean, we've struggled to get like the highest close that we've been able to get since uh, February 20th. This was the last time we closed above it, but the highest close was right here on the 20th, so not too long ago. On Wednesday of last week, I believe the close was $4.65. So that is getting above 461.8, which is the 786 from this retracement. Uh, but we couldn't hold it. We got, you know, a big push up the following day on Thursday, but got rejected from 486 and then came down. And so with those two days combined, like really from the close here, you know, we've come down almost 9%. And... That yellow line originates from something in the past. Let's see, I guess that's the open from May 16th of 2023. Did act as support over here as well as here. Broke below it a little bit, but then, you know, broke below it again. Revisited, acted as support, 
Um, and now, you know, uh, it looks like it's acting as resistance again, having gotten rejected from there on Thursday. Where do I see price coming back to? You know, I just drew this, you know, rough uptrend here. Price could potentially be coming back to that, maybe getting a low. I mean, really just, you know, the low that was over here, $4.18.5. I could see price coming down to that. Um, but yeah, I also do see this gap to the downside here at $3.43.5. That also, you know, it's the gap here. There's this gap up that has not yet been filled, almost got it filled uh, right here uh, when we came down to uh, uh, $3.52. Uh, but that gap, let's see, the high there was $3.43.5. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I could see price coming down there, but also with these higher lows, maybe, um, you know, it's stronger than than I, I would think. Uh, but, I mean, also, you know, we do have this, you know, let's say uh, we have this big drop here. This is like the flagpole. This is to be a bear flag. And then we have this kind of like choppy downtrending consolidation and so if, since it's downtrending, you'd think it'd break higher. It didn't. And then what we actually see now is price trading within this uptrending channel. And so that might be breaking to the downside. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, I feel like APLD looks like it might be coming down. But I guess like really like key levels that I would want to be paying attention to, one, $4.18.5. Hopefully we don't get a close below that. If we do get a close, I'd look for a second close that's lower. And then that might be confirming breakdown. Uh, and then if that does happen, then I'd be looking for uh, three uh, $3.87.5, which was the low hit on February 23rd. I would think of that as kind of like a stop loss level. If price does break lower than that, um, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be in it, you know, because then I could maybe buy back down at this gap at 343.5. But, you know, maybe you just want to hold that and that's just like a, a level to keep an eye on and then, you know, maybe accumulate more down here. But yeah, I mean, I, I feel like this is going down, unfortunately. It just hasn't shown the strength. You know, it's had multiple opportunities to and like you can look at, um, you know, the highs from over here, or the tops over here. Uh, they've just like been progressively getting lower, and yeah, and I really, I mean, I guess this is kind of like a uh, descending triangle a little bit, flat on the bottom, broke below it, and attempting to hold above, but yeah, I mean, I think at 418.5, I think that's going to be a really key level, so I'd look for a price to be respecting that, uh, but I'd also prepare for the downside. Hey, Big Bird, are you looking uh, for buy or? Yeah, <laughs> I've got it up there already. Uh, yeah, it should definitely be an interesting week. And I was also thinking, um, you know, so I am I work afternoons, evenings, so I won't be able to cover their um, their earnings call live. But I think on Tuesday, I think I get done with work at uh, by, yeah, time difference, whatever and stuff. But I could do uh, a uh, late night uh, earnings stream of buy or. Uh, they'd probably be around, let's see, 10, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. So I could do that Tuesday if you guys are interested. I'll probably put up a poll for that. Or I could do it in the morning, probably before, uh, during the pre-market and on Wednesday. And so I'll put up a poll and make sure you guys vote in that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I personally am interested in Biora's earnings. And so I'd be happy to stream that so we can all, you know, kind of learn together what's going on with it. And hey, Chris, what's up? Um, yeah, BGXX, I'll definitely go over it. I am going to go over uh, one of Nameless's requests first, though, because I tend to uh, forget some of the ones that he requests. Um, and so I will add Fisker as well. Yeah, hope, hopefully the video I put out this weekend, if you saw it, hopefully it was helpful. You know, I'm, I, it's, um, you know it's, it's been a tough one, but I'm just trying to navigate at least for me, managing my risk, wanting to hold some in case it does go up. Um, and so I know you've uh, covered it recently, but this week could be big, um, up or down. For me, I mean, I feel like for Fisker, I'm, I feel like, like at least for me, I'm preparing for it to go up or down. I think that, um, yeah, I mean, it's the reality is it could go to zero. 
I don't think that's necessarily going to happen soon, and I think that it could move up violently like uh, Canoe did. And so, you know, I want to, that's what I'm hoping for, but I also want to prepare for the downside. Uh, but yeah, I'll go over the chart in a minute. I'm just, I'm actually going to remove Apply Digital since I just went over that. And then, and I will come back to BGXX, but I need to go over SPXU. And with this, you know, really I, I should go over the SPX. And I did put out a post on this on the channel um, that was really just like following Thursday. I was just thinking, oh, it looks like it might have been rejected from the top of this uh, uptrending, you know, the top of the wedge here. And, you know, I was wondering what was going to happen at the end of the day because it seemed like, um, let's see, let's look at the uh, hourly time scale. Um, let's see, I want to. Let's see, there's no after hours trading for this. But yeah, I I guess this was on the uh, 22nd. Yeah, so I saw this coming up and it's like, oh man, it's it's going up. I'm I can't believe it. It never stops going down. But yeah, I mean this this now looks like it's potentially at the bottom of that wedge, but I think that I may want to redraw the bottom of that wedge since we have so many breaks below it. I should probably adjust the bottom of it. So I'll probably do that here, just adding another line in case I want to um, add, uh, in case I don't want to add it, I guess, if I want to exclude it. And so let's see, this line, um, the low, I'm just gonna adjust it so it's right on the exact penny. Um, so there, it's good there, and then, up here, let's see, not that one. All right, what's the low on this day? 4946. So we'll put that in there. So that should be lined up just right. And so we can kind of compare that. Yeah, so we did get, you know, another fake out breaks below it. I could see this coming down more, but I could also see this bouncing. Um, I, I feel like, um, you know, like with the, um, the big short movie, um, there's this quote from it that is just like, you know, uh, one of the characters gets so frustrated. It just says, you know, it's a completely fraudulent system or completely fraudulent, uh, you know, um, market, whatever it was, uh, that he was referring to the housing market. And, um, yeah, I mean, I just, I feel like things are just going to keep going up, even though they should be coming down. Gravity should be pulling them down. Um, but, you know, I, man, I did this post doing like a measured move from, let's see, I have to go on the weekly to do this. Uh, but, you know, this was kind of a joke, but I just did like, let's see, measurement from here to here. And that's, you know, I don't know if I can copy that. But if I just move that to, let's see, yeah, the low after this, you know, that just being approximate, that would suggest price would be coming up to here, around like 61, 6200. And, you know, I kind of wonder if that's going to happen. Like, I, I put out a tweet about that as a joke. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking that this may keep going up. But, um, yeah, it's tough to say. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I added, I mean, I don't have a huge position, but I added a good amount, more than doubled my SPXU position. I think either, I think fall, like maybe Thursday after hours and Friday, um, because I think that, you know, this could be the bottom, 460. But, you know, and that largely being because SPX hit the, you know, uptrend line here. But if it does, it can, you know, retest that, and then it would be going to a new all-time high. So I don't necessarily think the bottom is in for SPXU. And it's, like, really frustrating that all of this stuff, you know, the market just keeps going up. <laughs> um, and, and, yeah, I can look at NVIDIA real quick because I think that's an important factor. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, because they had this, you know, really big bearish engulfing candle, you know, engulfing both of these candles here. 
sideways consolidation moving up. Um, and so I think it's really going to be a test. Can it get, what's this line that I have uh, drawn there? Oh, okay, 968.77. That's just an extension from a Fibonacci retracement. But really like the high being uh, 974. I think it's going to be a real test to see if we can get above that. And I think NVIDIA could be getting to $1,000 a share. Just seems like, you know, that might be like a magnet, you know, kind of pulling the price that way. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I think SPXU, hopefully 640 is the bottom, but I suspect it's not. I think that the SPX will make another attempt at the top of this wedge uh, whenever that is, uh, that will be at a higher price, a new all-time high. But I do think that the SPXU might be, there. Might it might continue up maybe getting to $6.66 in this 1618 extension, which, um, you know, just coming from this run-up. So maybe it would be going there, uh, but I do think that it could be pulling back after that. Yeah, because, I mean, this could come down to... Let's see, from current price, if this came down to this other uptrend that I drew over a couple of days, that would be coming down to, let's see, uh, that would be down like half a percent, a little over half a percent. Is that right? Um, yeah, so I think that could happen. And with that, SPXU would go up about one and a half percent. And so that could be, yeah. Maybe just getting to here, which would be like 161, 162, or sorry, not one, uh, 662, 661, something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are my thoughts on that. It's just, I feel like the tops, yeah, and also like, um, just thinking about like the big short and how, um, yeah, I think Michael Burry was the one who said, you know, completely fraudulent system. Um, and... You know, he was just so early with his shorts. Everybody was early with their shorts. And they were just waiting and waiting and waiting for this bubble to pop. And so I feel like, you know, bubbles don't just pop when, you know, it's like you have a bubble and it's like sustainable at this size. You got to push it, you know, further and further for it to burst. And so I think that, you know, we do have a bubble, but that doesn't mean it's ready to burst. And... Uh, so I think that it might stay a bubble for a while before it ultimately pops. Um, and I think that we'll just be like pulling our hair out, not in, like in complete disbelief how high the market's been able to go. And so with that being said, you know, maybe this is going up to $6,200. Uh, I, I don't think that's happening, but maybe that'd be crazy if it did. But anyways, I'm going to switch over to some of the other tickers. Hopefully that was help, helpful, nameless. Uh, but I, yeah, I mean, I just feel like shorting the market is going to be like painful until it's really rewarding. And when it's really rewarding, it will be painful for everybody else. So it just seems like it's just a lot of pain. Um, and so, yeah, I will go over next. I'll go over Matterport real quick and then I'll do Bior and, um, and then BGXX. So I'm just kind of going in order from the comments just to kind of take those off the list. Um, and I will get NVIDIA off here. So yeah, just doing Matterport really quick. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, so I do see this line 184. What What's that based on the low over here? Um, yeah, I think I did, when I did the last video on Matterport, it wasn't terribly popular. So I, I don't know that I'll be doing too many more Matterport videos. So if you guys do want to see them, let me know and I'll, I'll try to do them during the uh, ticker request live. Um, but yeah, let's see. Let's look at the weekly. Maybe this is, yeah, so maybe this is, I mean, it's not good that there's this big wick to the upside, but this could suggest that the bottom's not necessarily in, but it might be forming a bottom, you know, because I mean, the previous week we closed at um, 177, closed five cents higher than that. And so, so I think that's good, although, you know, got rejected from all these levels. So I think, you know, it'd be key to be closing above 184. Hopefully we can see that in the next week. But then also, you know, then it could be like, oh, maybe it's forming a bear flag if it's just consolidating here. Um, so that is something to consider. 
<clears throat> but yeah, reclaiming 184, definitely going to be important. Um, I can't imagine doing a Fibonacci retracement is going to add too much. I'm just going to add all these levels. I don't like to add them in after I've done it. Um, yeah, so I'll just do retracement from, I'll start from up here. And then let's see, what's the high? 54. About right, not perfect. Um, and I can make that perfect. So there we go. Yeah, so 193 really seems like it's going to be a level to that we need to reclaim. And yeah, I mean, but I do think it's good that it's holding this downtrending support, which is, you know, based on these two lows. But at the same time, and we saw this like fake out here. So I feel like that suggests that this level is either invalid now or just not as strong. Because, you know, we could potentially be going lower, you know, connecting. Because this is just like two touch points that it was respected on. Really, I guess the third one here. Um, yeah, let's see. I wonder if... Yeah, and then when price is getting so low, I mean, if this is, did I suggest this in the last video that maybe this is, now, well, this left shoulder went higher than the head, so I don't think that'd be right. But, you know, if it broke, that would bring price down to like 40 cents. That seems a little extreme. Um, maybe there's a trend here or something. Uh, this is just, yeah, maybe there's something there. Uh, and this is, you know, wedge. So hopefully, you know, this downtrend, hopefully it does not close below 174. I think that would be bad if it closed below 174. That would be, I believe, a new all-time close, lowest close. Um, so yeah, I'd keep an eye on 174, hopefully reclaiming 184 in the next couple of days. Uh, but I do think that, you know, if it does move up and consolidate around 184, above 184, because it would be moving up to get there and then consolidating, that would make me think it could be a bull flag. But if it kind of hugs the base of this downtrend or like 174, if it hugs this level, and then goes, and then, and then if you're waiting for it to go up, that might actually just be a bear flag. But if it does go up some above 184 and starts to consolidate there, then I think it would have a chance at moving up to uh, like 193 and then maybe consolidating above the orange line and then getting up to around $2 or 205, consolidating up there, repeating that process. So yeah, I'd look for this downtrend and keeping an eye on closes at 174. I think that's going to be key. But yeah, I mean this could be this could be a nice, you know, falling wedge. So it might be at the bottom now basically. But it could be breaking below tomorrow. <laughs> I have no idea. All right. And then so the next one is Bior. Yeah, so I'll go over this. I'll kind of do it roughly. I got to delete a bunch of these uh levels, I think. Uh, but yeah, I will put out a video on Biora tomorrow. And you know, before I get into it, I should probably uh, just go to the uh, channel. Let's see, do I do that here? I can do it from over here. Um, create, I will create a post. Oh, I guess I should have done, done it from over here. Uh, let's see. When should I stream by Biora Therapeutics um, earnings call? And then I'll do that. And so I could do Tuesday, which is uh, March 26th. So um, March 26th at around, I'm going to say, 
uh, Tuesday. I think I should be able to do 10.30 p.m. Eastern or March 27th at or around then. And then this, um, let's see, uh, I'll do this at, I could do um, 7 a.m. Eastern or around then. And so, yeah, you guys can vote in this and uh, let me know. So um, I, I will do either evening or morning. Either way, you will be able to access it after I do stream it, uh, but that's there. You guys can let me know. I definitely want to listen to it for myself, regardless whether I do it that evening or that morning. Uh, so it's fine with me. But yeah, I will go over the chart really quick here. And then I will do a more formal, a cleaner video on it tomorrow. You know, I was just talking about bull flags and bear flags. You know, this did... move. Maybe I want to clean this up. I'll just remove that stuff. But this moved up a bunch and then came down and then consolidated. And also I saw somebody posting about orders being filled at like a dollar three or you know below current price or you know below the let's see what was the low here 101 so maybe yeah um, and this is on the weekly dang it was I did I just do what ticker did I just go over uh, that was was it Matterport? Did I just do Matterport on the weekly time frame? Did I not look at it on the daily time frame? No, I had to have looked at that on the daily time frame, right? No, I guess I did a lot of the analysis on the weekly time frame. But yeah, if we can claim reclaim 184, I think that would be really, really good. But we are holding this downtrend. So yeah, basically my analysis is the same, but it just seems a little, I don't know, less supportive this way because we're below 184 for that one candle. But anyway, sorry I did that on the mostly on the weekly, um, but hopefully that uh, was helpful analysis. But yeah, so Biora. Yeah, so this is on the daily, so not screwing that up here. And I need to definitely remove some of these levels. Um, I feel like this is just like nostalgia for me, this orange one, because this is when it like squeezed up. And then I just became really excited by, by where after that. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I mean, it does look like it's testing. Let's see, I might just remove this for a little bit. Yeah, so it goes up a bunch and then it comes down and then it consolidates and yeah I want this to be bullish but let's see do I think that it is so I think um, yeah I'm, I'm just gonna delete all of these and I'm just gonna start fresh I think it's good to start fresh every once in a while uh, that downtrend you know that's not in the way and that has historical significance for me. So I'm going to leave that. All right. So, yeah, I mean, just like without those Fibonacci retracements, we do have, you know, it does look like we're getting rejected. We're not able to break above this yellow downtrend. We're kind of sandwiched between that and the like a dollar 15. And so, yeah, I mean, I feel like because it's, you know, it moved up. That's great, but then it pulled back down. So it's like, you know, just just think about it like, uh, let's see, just like with this. It came down over these candles and then consolidated. So that makes me think it's a bear flag. This is bearish. Um, even though this is up from down here, it came down and then did that. Uh, it's It's also having a tough time getting above this yellow downtrend which is based on, well, it's a little wonky. I need to adjust it. Oh, man. Yeah, why Why did I not have that locked? And Hmm, maybe this could be better. Um, let's see. That's, um, 
high one, uh, let's see, 166, 161. 160, okay, so that's perfect. And I lock that, okay, good. And so, man, yeah, that doesn't look as, I actually think it looked better before. And so I might adjust this line to the open, which was 158. Maybe um, I feel like I'm fudging this to make it look the way I want it to. So I'm going to move this one to the high here, which was 150. Perfect. And so, yeah, I mean that, you know, I just I just fudged it to look the way I wanted to, but basically, or that, you know, what makes sense to me, you know, because this is like, you know, gap up, and it's like, it's a spinning top, or a, um, I think that's a shooting star, and, or an evening star, I'm not sure exactly, um, but yeah, I mean, this does seem like it got rejected from that level, it hasn't been able to hold it, um, and, you know, if you think about this, the, the top of this, you know, this yellow line, and this red line, this makes a descending triangle, and so it might be breaking to the downside. So, um, yeah, I mean, hopefully it doesn't, but if it does, we'd get some discounted shares, so I think that'd be nice. Um, and then, you know, so I'll, I'll do a video on this, and I'll probably include, well, I'll just do one real quick here. I think it's not going to be all the levels I removed some. So from that does look like the 786 acted as support. I'm going to add the um, 618 in there. I'm not going to lock it. Yeah, so we're just kind of like sandwiched. Yeah, maybe this is, you know, it's moved up and consolidated. So maybe that is, uh, there's some potential for it to launch up. I feel like it looks like it's 50-50. And like with earnings, it pretty much always is 50-50. So... I'd expect some volatility. And one thing that I've noticed, like with Palantir, there was like a really big drop before earnings and then it went up. I mean, if like, let's say, I mean, for me, if price is above a dollar, I can place an order for however many shares below a dollar. Uh, but if it's the price is below a dollar, I can only buy in increments of 100 shares. And so what I might do before earnings is I might place an order just, you know, down here, you know, uh, let's see. I'd have to think about that, pick, pick a level that makes sense. What was the low over here? The low over here was 105, low over here, 101. Maybe, you know, if, if price is still up here before earnings, maybe there would be a violent move to the downside and you could just have like, you know, an order placed around 104 at the 786. Maybe that would get filled and then price would go up and so you'd have taken advantage of the dip. But if it continued down, then, you know, just don't chase a falling knife and just wait for it to settle and know that, you know, you'll probably have more opportunities to get discounted shares. Yeah, because I mean, now it's above a dollar. It's like, oh man, I wish I got more when it was 78 cents. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll definitely do a clean video on this tomorrow though, because uh, yeah, I, because I want to. Um, and so, all right, all in investor. I hope you enjoyed that. But yeah, I'll definitely uh, uh, do the stream of the earnings call and do a nice clean video on it. And I will add here SoFi, most definitely, and Polestar. Yeah, I feel bad. I haven't been, um, I kind of got out of sync with doing the like weekly rotation of videos just because to be honest, I just, I spread myself too thin in February and got kind of burnt out. Um, and, um, yeah, and I didn't know, like, I feel like I, I was working really good. I was like vibing with the algorithm, but then all of a sudden really like after the plug powers earnings call, which like blew up after that, I like fell out of sync with the algorithm and videos just haven't been performing as well. So, I, and, and it's like, oh, well last week this one performed well, I'll do it again. And then it wouldn't perform well. And so, 
yeah, I mean, it's it's been tough to navigate that. So I've kind of lost some steam. But yeah, definitely I'll go over these that I have covered in the past before. Um, and let's see. Um, what I need to go over BGXX because I have not done that yet. So I'm just going to remove this one from the list. And then after BGXX, I will go over Fisker, SoFi, Polestar. And at some point, I'll go over ChargePoint. But let's see. Okay, BGXX. Yeah, this one's interesting because let's see. What, let's look at the company profile. Bright Green Corporation is a provider of cannabis, cannabis-related products, and other legal medicinal plant-based therapies manufactured in exact formulations for research and pharmaceutical applications and as an active ingredient to consumer-based solutions. The company is engaged in cannabis propagation, cultivation, and manufacturing of cannabis products, including cannabis flower, pre-rolls, concentrates, vape pens, capsules, tinctures, edibles, topicals, and any other cannabis-related products requested for authorized sales. The company plans to sell extracted oils from medicinal plants grown in these high-tech facilities, in these high-tech facilities, and processed on-site through a system that vertically integrates the genetically altered growth of the plants to conform to automated growing systems. It also plans to cultivate and manufacture cannabis for federally sanctioned research as well as perform authorized research on cannabis, including can, uh, cannabinol, C CBN, CBG, and CBD, uh, which is, out of uh, curiosity for myself, I'm just going to read them, Canna, cannabinol, CBN, cannabiger, cannabigerol is CBG, and cannabidiol, bidiol is CBD, cool. Um, yeah, so what happened with this, let's see, moved up a lot. Let's see, how much has it gone up from like the low here to the current price? Up 77%, so up a good amount. Um, hmm, what do analysts say? There are no analysts. Yeah, 26 cents, though, 28 cents, uh, 26 28 cents. I feel like, you know, for me, I've covered a lot of penny stocks in the channel. Not necessarily a lot, but I've covered a fair amount of them. And, you know, like what, uh, like for me, uh, I got spooked with uh, GOEV. I had a very small position. And so there's, you know, nothing uh, notable lost for me. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it seemed like I got spooked with that uh, one for 23 split. What's going on with Fisker? Uh, there are a number of other stocks I feel like that are, you know, just in the pennies range. And I feel like, I mean, if you are interested in investing in cannabis, I think that the ETF that I did a video on, it seems like a good one. And then the other tickers that I went over. Yeah, I mean, this market cap is 50 million, not even 50 million. Um, and that's after being up 77%. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, this this just seems like, if it's up 77% at 50, let's say it's up, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was worth a very small amount. So it's like a 26, um, I suck at mental math. Um, but that's like, yeah, I mean, it was like a 30 million market cap, somewhere around there. Um, and this, yeah, I, I feel like that there are better if you're interested in investing in cannabis, I feel like there are better ones to go with, probably. Um, yeah. This this one just seems risky. That's, I guess, what my take on it. As far as the chart goes, we did just put in a pretty big bearish engulfing candle that engulfs, let's see, four candles. Look at that. So the low, or the close, on Friday, 26.80, the open here was 26.62. Okay, so we didn't engulf that one, but we engulfed these. This one, the open was 27. Yep. So yeah, this bearish engulfing candle for the entire week, the entire week was a bearish engulfing candle, was engulfed by that candle. If we look at the weekly chart, you know, it looks pretty small because it did go up, but you know, you have to think, you know, it went up a bunch and then came down and then consolidated. 
So, yeah, I mean, if we switch over to, like, let's see, the hourly time frame. Yeah, this just came down, consolidated, and let's see. Yeah, I mean, has a, has had a hard time getting above that level, and it's been flat underneath it. So that, to me, looks like a descending triangle. It hasn't really tested, I guess, the bottom there too much. This one just seems risky, and I feel like, um, especially, I mean, with looking at this on the daily time scale, all those other cannabis tickers, they went up like 10, like 9, I think was the lowest, 9% to like 68%. And this one went down 7.5% Friday with the good news. And this is also health, like more uh, integrated with the healthcare sector, I would say. And that seems like the Schedule 3 reclassification would be beneficial for them because I do think that is more of like a medicinal type of thing. Um, but yeah... Yeah, and then also like look at this consolidation. You haven't been getting like the thirty cents. You know, you haven't been able to get closes above thirty cents. The highest close here uh, was twenty nine point three two. Yeah, so this one just seems risky. And then I will add B N E D as well. Oh, Barnes and Noble. Cool. And then I will put this on the uh, DGen Ed list. Uh, delete it. Just went through that. And so the next one that was on the list after that was Fisker. And so, yeah, so Chris, you're asking about Fisker as well. So thanks for following up on that. But yeah, you're saying uh, they're reporting on stock puts that Fisker is at. 14.6 cents. Yeah, I don't see anything. Yeah, because for me, at least, the trading doesn't start until, um, I guess it's like 4 a.m. Eastern, I believe. But yeah, I mean, that would be nice if it's, you know, getting towards 50, 15 cents. Um, but yeah, I mean, for, for me, what I plan on doing with this is I have... I realize, you know, I don't have, like, I, I didn't put tons of money into it, but I, just, I have a larger position that I, I realize I need. And so what I'm probably going to do is if it goes up to 15 cents, if it goes up to 30 cents, I'll probably trim, like, in total 20% uh, of my position over the course of the next week. And then I'll just hold the rest of it with the hope that, you know, it goes up to 70 cents, a dollar, whatnot. Uh, but I'll probably just reevaluate that on a weekly basis. But I think, you know... I need to trim my position just to begin that process. And um, and then also if I do sell some at a loss, that will keep me from buying it again for 30 days because I don't want to get a wash sale. And that's like if you sell something at a loss, you want to be able to capitalize on that loss as far as your taxes go. You want to be able to claim it, but you have to wait 30 days before you can buy it back. And so if I sell a little bit as a loss, at a loss, then it's just like, okay, but I'm just going to watch for the next month. I'm just going to wait and see. Maybe I'll trim a little more if it goes higher, but I'm just going to wait and see. I'm not going to buy any dips. Um, but yeah, I feel like the video that I did, you know, um, I kind of compared this to uh, GOEV, Canoe, and how they just squeezed up. And so I could see this definitely like, you know, I feel like for me, it's probably just like, you know, classic, you know, selling the bottom. <laughs> But I just think that with with the, I mean, I started buying this around this red line. I did not think it would be around 12 cents. So that's just crazy. And, you know, doing the weekly videos on it going down, you know, just accumulating. And then it's like, oh, wow, I've accumulated a good amount. And my average is now not very low. Um, so, yeah, filling this gap for me would be really nice. But, you know, if I trim a little bit here, then it's like, okay, you know, I'm not worried about it. if it goes up here, I'd still have more to hold. 
So, um, well, uh, yeah, stock twits is the, is just like discussion though, right? It's just people talking about what it's at, but because some of these stocks, I think that they do, uh, like pre-market or, you know, trading begins a little bit different at different times in other countries. So I wonder if that's a thing, but yeah, I mean, I, I could see, I could see the bottom being in pretty soon. Just like it's, yeah, I mean, when everybody's just, you know, or everybody, when I, you know, have lost all faith, you know, then it's just like, eh. you know, it's like a, you know, if you buy a shares of something, the price always goes down. So you got to sell it so it can go up. And so, you know, I guess, you know, that's what I'm kind of, I'm getting into that headspace of, I, I got to trim my position a little bit at a loss. So price will go up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I just think that I don't even know how significant these levels are because they're so extended from, you know, these re like small retracements up here. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, we, okay, so the lowest, we don't want to see a close lower than 1160. We haven't seen that yet. Uh, maybe, maybe this will, I don't even know how, yeah, a little bit downtrending. Um, and so hopefully, hopefully we close tomorrow above 1317. Chris, hopefully you're right. And people on, uh, stock quits are right about this being up, uh, pre-market. Let's see. Is there any news? Uh, six days ago. What's, what are the comments here? I can look at some of the comments here. Hey folks, where is that over the weekend news? Huh? None is expected. Just somebody trolling. Um, and then here. Overnight trading looking juicy. So somebody is agreeing with you, Chris. Uh, or maybe they're just referring to what they found on stock twits. Uh, take me with you, Fisky. In for the long haul. Chilling. Yeah, so that's that's the right mindset to have. But just like, yeah, to but to be managing risk at these low levels in case... Yeah, like don't don't bet your house on this. Um, let's see, what's this person say? Prepared for ten cents tomorrow. Don't care with this crazy low average. That being said, staying positive for a fun play here. To all the bears wishing people to lose money and for a company to go under, go yourself. Um, yeah, so. That is, um, yeah, screw those people who are bearish and hoping Fisker to go under. I'm not hoping for that. Definitely not. I want everybody to be making money. And so for those, you know, I've heard some people, you know, bought the dip, have averages, I think around 14 cents, somebody was saying that. And yeah, that's awesome. But like, I, yeah, if some people, you know, I started making videos on this up here. And some of the people, uh, maybe some of you guys who are watching it, holding the bag from up here. And I just think that like buying a lot down here with the hope of price going up to like five bucks, I feel like that's kind of a stretch. And so I wouldn't want people, let's say you've got, you know, half of your savings put into Fisker. And it's like, oh, well, you know, it's it's now or nothing uh, to put the other half of savings in now. So you, you maybe get your average down to five or maybe to 250 or you know 350 here. Um, I think that is getting into very risky territory. Um, but if you're just establishing a position now or if your average is low or small enough that you you got some wiggle room, um, yeah. And I mean, for me, you know, just in making these videos, I do feel a little bit of responsibility for like, I didn't expect this to go to 12 cents. And now that it's there, it's like, well, and there's the possibility of bankruptcy. I would, I, I wouldn't want to be encouraging or, or, you know, I'm not encouraging, but going over this, uh, thinking that, oh, you know, it might getting in somebody's head that, oh, it might squeeze up to five bucks. I don't think I don't think that is I think that's possible, but I don't think it's good to get hopes too high on that. I think an expectation of price going to 
7150. I think that's um, feasible considering what just happened with Canoe. Uh, but, you know, this could also go lower. And so, yeah, so if someone in another country is seeing price action and reporting it, I bought a lot, so I'm totally getting excited. Awesome. And they, yeah, that you have a bunch of shares, uh, bet it all. Yeah, so I mean, everybody has their own risk tolerance, so as long as you're managing your risk uh, in a way that works for you, that is good. Uh, Chris is saying 16 cents in the pre-market elsewhere, so that's awesome. Yeah, so all of my shares, since I've been selling covered calls, I was doing them uh, with strikes of $1.50. Now those covered calls, uh, like you look at, like we can actually look at the options table here. So like covered calls, these are all calls, yeah. Uh, bid for all of them, zero. For the week after, oh, I guess, you know, you can make $1 um, with a 0.5 cent, a 50 cent strike. The following week again, 50 cents. So you don't, that's not really worth it. Um, and then this has to be the monthly. Yep. And so 50 cent, nothing up here. Let's see, open interest. Yeah, those are all going to zero. Maybe not though, maybe not. Maybe it squeezes one here that's going to April 26th. Um, but yeah, it'll be definitely be an interesting week. And yeah, I'm I'm hoping that we see 70 plus cents. So that would be pretty cool. But yeah, so I, I don't know if there's much that I need to add on Fisker. If you guys haven't seen the video that I did on it, kind of comparing it with uh, uh, Canoe, I think that might be an interesting one. Uh, but I will check this off the list and move on to the next ticker. Uh, which you guys have requested, which is, I've gone over by Aura, SoFi is next then. So I will do that. Uh, let's see. SoFi here. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it moved up. Now coming down, I could see it. Uh, let's see, I've got to, I've got to basically, if I make a video, if I do anything, I've just got to delete all of the, Fibonacci levels. Yeah, because this is also kind of, these coincide with other lines that I've drawn. Probably not that useful. And so what I want to do is just do a wee little Fibonacci retracement from the bottom here, 682 up to the top here. And that is at a price of 757. So I'll lock that in place. And so yeah, coinciding with 721, 719, 50% retracement. Hopefully we find support there. Or, you know, hopefully we found support at the 382, which is at uh, $7.28, close two cents above that. So that could be a nice level. But I I, I feel like a 50% retracement, that would be 719, 720. That might be a good level to wait for, you know, either buy the dip to add more or, um, you know, whatever. But I mean, it is quite possible that 382, uh, that the 382 at 728 will be respected as we did get, you know, I mean, it really, I mean, like the trading on Friday was like perfectly between these two levels, uh, the 236 being at a 739. And so the high was 741. So got rejected from there, but found support above the 382. So it's quite possible it has found a bottom and maybe 728 is, you know, the launching pad for it to go higher. Um, but it could, yeah, I would look for like key levels for it to reclaim 739, for it to hold 728. And if it does go lower for a dip, probably right around 720, uh, that might be... It, maybe it gets a wick down there or something. You know, it could it could get a wick down, but then close above 728. So, like if if one is looking to add, I feel like, uh, you know, for me, what I would do, 
I'm, I'm probably not adding more. I've spread myself too thin with my positions. And I've realized I have the most conviction with Doge and with Rumble. So I like kind of want to focus on those uh, as far as my, my trading goes over like the next Doge for a while, but Rumble, see what happens over the next month or two. Um, but yeah, this coming back, I feel like those are going to be important levels. Let's see, um, the low over here, that would be breaking down lower. But yeah, I mean... 720, and then the next one down, 711, easy one to remember. That's a 618, um, and then below that, right around seven bucks. But yeah, I'd say hope for 720 acting as support, uh, if not already found it, having found it uh, above 728. And then let's see, I got some more comments. Oh, okay, let's see. Um, I got SoFi. Oh, and give my take on the possibility. Hey, more money. Sorry, I didn't see you. I Sorry if I haven't been saying hi to people. Uh, oh, and uh, NASCAR, see you as well uh, with your B-N-E-D request. I do have it up there. Uh, and Big Mo, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, so possibility of a short squeeze. More money is asking about that. Uh, well, let's see. What is the, like, I'm not that great at looking this up. But uh, let's see, SoFi uh, short interest. So from, I find it to be, yeah, easy for me to access from Fintel, short interest to float 17%. Um, and then off exchange short volume ratio 42.7%. Um, uh, let's see. So, yeah, so I don't know if that's helpful. I would expect this to be higher if it was going to have a short squeeze, but maybe like the 42, 43% uh, short volume ratio, maybe that's a better value to be looking at. But let's see. Yeah, I... I don't know. I have no idea if it could short squeeze. It's gone. It's gone up uh, in the after hours on Friday. It went up 0.14 percent. So, <laughs> but yeah, I I would think that if it can hold 7.28, I definitely think that it could go higher. Would that be a short squeeze? I'm not sure. But I think like 7.88 would will be a level to contend with. Um, since it was rejected there before. And then really like getting up to like 811, this consolidation over here. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe this is a little wedge. And then yeah, so I mean if it can consolidate here, but I mean it's just pulled back some, so. Hopefully it can hold 728, but if not, 720. And then maybe another attempt, and then uh, maybe a break, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, uh, SoFi had, you know, break out of this. You know, this was like breaking out of this wedge within this channel, moved up a lot. And so this is potentially another wedge. And let's see, we got like a couple tests at the bottom with that one. This wedge, you know, really just got a uh, three before breaking out. So, yeah, I mean, I, for me, I'd, I'd keep an eye on 720. I'll put an alert there for myself. And I'm gonna delete most of these. I just don't, I don't use my, uh, I just turn off the alerts because I just don't pay attention to them. But yeah, below 720. I think that's one to pay attention to. But yeah, and I'm gonna have a little bit of a drink. I've just been letting it sit here. All right, so now I've got SoFi. And I think the next one is Polestar. Let's see. Yeah, I think that this is interesting because it, you know, moved up and then it's consolidating here. It's been making these crosses though. 
dojis. So I guess that's a little concerning. Um, but yeah, I mean, I should probably delete some of these. Yeah, it's just too much clutter. Um, I might. Hmm. Maybe I want to leave that one. Yeah, I mean, we've already established that as a bottom there. Where's this from? Oh, from up here. And delete that. And yeah, maybe, maybe there's something. But okay, so I'll do a Fibonacci retracement from 148 here up to the high that was 166. So maybe I want to make this yellow so it stands out. Um, and so potentially finding support at the 236 to then move higher. Yeah, I mean, this could be like a bull flag. Big green candle up, consolidation here above the 236. Maybe it will be going much higher. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and then uh, it's at two, uh, 163 in the after hours Friday, which is like right above the 618 here from this retracement. Yeah. And yeah, it's kind of ugly. I'm gonna delete this retracement. But, and I, I should delete this uptrend as well. I'm just gonna delete all this stuff, there's too much. Uh, I don't know that this purple line is useful. Um, but yeah, like, what do I see here? Maybe this is a shoulder, maybe this is a head, maybe this is a shoulder. And so that would mean I can draw a neckline from here to here about, and I will make that thick and purple. And so from that, we take a measurement from the base here up to the neckline, move that to let's say the breakouts over here, so that would be like the beginning of uh, after the first week of April, basically. That would be sending price up to 273, 86 cents from that break. If this is an inverse head and shoulders, maybe it's a different pattern though, um, but I could see that, that seems, yeah. And then like from, let's get a measurement from current price, It's a 68%, 69% swing. Um, yeah, and really like with an inverse head and shoulders, if you were able to get here, if you were able to get at the top of the head, you know, that would be the best percentage swing. But, you know, nobody ever is able to do that. That's over 100%. Um, yeah. So that's what I see with this potentially. It is kind of ugly though, and it's also like, you know, maybe this isn't an inverse head and shoulders and this is just gonna fade and go down. So yeah, I mean, it's like this represents a 45, 46% swing if you get a break and then a retest. Then you're also saving yourself some time, you know, cause it might go from here up to there. That's a 15% gain, you know, that's great. But then you're waiting for it over the course of like three weeks. And then when it even gets to there, you know, it's going to break out, get rejected at $2, pull back, and then go up. And so that is really like, you know, when it breaks out, goes up, but then returns to the scene of the crime, that is when you want to buy. So right now it's like risky in that it may not actually form that right shoulder and then, you know, go up to, you know, 273. 
but it might. And so, yeah, I mean, I guess if you already have shares, maybe this is a decent time to average in a little bit more, but maybe this is also, um, you know, a good time to wait and see. And so what I'm gonna do with this, I have just been, you know, I buy like, uh, oh, it's down a day, I'll add a little bit more. And I just had like a very small positions of a number of stocks and I just realized like, this is stupid. Just because I talk about it, just because I'm compelled by what's going on in the chart, doesn't mean I should, you know, just buy a few shares. That's just kind of, you know, I'm not gonna make a lot of money if it goes up a lot, but you know, keep an eye on this. And then if it breaks out and then pulls back, then maybe, you know, enter, and then you get a move, not that, not 46%, uh, but let's say it pulls back to, you know, this level, and maybe that would happen in a short amount of time. That's uh, almost a 60% swing there. So, you know, just, you know, throwing stuff up there, ideas. And I will check uh, SOXS. I'm just catching up on the comments. Um, and then I will also look up Holo as hollow as well. I always call it Holo. And SOXS. Um, and with SOXS, I should probably check SMH, I feel like. And so I just went over Polestar, so I'm gonna delete that. And I have not gone over BNED, so I will do that. Got nothing drawn up here. 58.7 cents. Yeah, I mean this, this could be, I mean, I'm, I'm not great at this, but you know, this green candle up almost 18% on the day, coming down three and two thirds percent. And then, yeah, so it's really like a coming down like four, about 4% 4 over these two days relative to this high, four and a half percent, 4.65%. And so maybe this is a bull flag and that this will go higher. I could see that, but it's also looks like it's, you know, below this kind of line resistance. Um, but yeah, I mean, it does look like that is a, whoa, I didn't expect this to line up with that. Seventy five. And this is low uh, 8239, 8239. Let's see how well this lines up with that other line that I drew. Not perfect, but does look like it's been resistance. So this gives me some clarity. This might be a little mini bull flag, but I feel like this is a bigger bear flag hiding under resistance here. Maybe it could get, get a break above this level. That would be going to like 61, 62 cents. If you can get a close above 61, 62 cents, I think that could be good. But I do think that, you know, drawing this downtrend makes me feel like, you know, this was support over here. You guys, big move down, consolidation. Let's see if we switch over. I'm going to remove the... I think it gets wonky when I switch between stuff. Yeah, so, I mean, this you don't even really see that much, but that's, you know, big move down, consolidation. And then you had, you know, this over here, so this is one big bear flag. Maybe this is another one. Um, but yeah, I mean, you got these two wicks, big wicks to the downside. So maybe that does suggest there's a bottom. But yeah, I would want to see it closing above at least 161, ideally 162. And to reclaim that level, I think would be really good. But yeah, I mean, I guess actually just earnings just happened. So maybe this was an overreaction. This is Barnes and Noble, Ed. 
What is Barnes & Noble Ed? Barnes & Noble Education is a contract operator of physical and virtual bookstores for college and university campuses in K-12 institutions across the United States. Cool. Um, yeah. I, I look for a close above at or above once or sorry 62 cents and if you get that maybe that's like a good time it actually you know two closes above it maybe the second close would be taken off um but yeah then we got this gap to the upside here that's a low of 87.1 cents so yeah i mean i I I look for getting above that level and then maybe like a swing up to 87 cents or higher. But yeah, this downtrend kind of makes me a little nervous about it. Big Mo, what did you ask for? Uh Polestar. Yeah, I, I'm glad that was helpful. Hopefully um hopefully it was helpful. Yeah, I like I there I wish I didn't have a job and then I could just make videos all the time, but I just have so so little time after work or really before work um to make videos. And some of them, you know, are really popular. And I think it's just bit depending on what's going on with the the stocks, like the cannabis video I just put out, very popular. That's going up a lot, but everything else just seems to be kind of flat or fading. So there's not a lot of interest you know people aren't going to youtube to watch this stuff and so i think it's just kind of like you know really at times like that you know i probably shouldn't just be doing many videos just take take a break recharge and then when things start to get volatile again start making more videos but it's also good to prepare for that volatility that's why i don't get why people don't aren't always watching this stuff uh just kind of in waves uh but yeah bned i think that one looks interesting i'm gonna Put an alert for myself, which I may not pay attention to, at 62 cents. I want to see it above that. And I will add this to the DGen Ed list before now going on to, let's see, um, what did I get? All right, so nameless requested SOXS, so I will do that. Yeah, so this, looking at the SMH, this with a gap up, this doesn't seem too strong. Um, so I don't feel like this is going. I think it might pull back a little bit. RSI 63. Still, you know, it's um, lower high, lower high. So that's good. It's not, there's no divergence there. Which would be bearish if there was if it was, um, but but yeah, I mean with this green candle day, couldn't get a close above the previous day's close. Couldn't get a close above the previous day's high. Got these wicks. the The wicks are bigger on the top than they are on the bottom, and so I mean, but maybe this is just some consolidation for the next move up. But with these wicks, I feel like it's less convincing. Um, get up to the downside. Yeah, so I mean, just looking at, so SMH is a semiconductor ETF. Looking at this, I feel like this will be at least pulling back to fill this gap. And so looking at SOXS, thinking about that, this gap, I think it could be at least going up to 342, 343. But then I think after that, because the market is a monster and just will not die. Um, like I think Nvidia could be hitting a thousand dollars a share, and with that, I don't necessarily think the bottom is in for SOXS, which is just crazy. But, but yeah, I mean maybe what would be good is if it did come down and form a double bottom. That could be nice. This goes up. Let's look at NVIDIA real quick. Yeah, I mean, if this were to go up to like 1,000, then, yeah, I wonder where the RSI would be up here. When it hit 974, the RSI was 83.91. 
So if this goes up to $1,000 a share and the RSI is lower than 84, that's bearish divergence. So you got higher highs up here, lower highs in the RSI. But of course, you know, price could just continue going higher, pushing the RSI higher and then come down, cool off. But yeah, I mean, 82, 83.91 over here. This was a high of 85.04. So it could go higher. What happened after that? It, you know, consolidated and went even higher. But then this is getting higher highs. Where's the RSI is getting lower? But then this is just like consolidated. It's a monster. NVIDIA, stock market monsters. Uh, but yeah, I think that SOXS could be moving up to fill this gap, and then I think it'll be pulling back. And if NVIDIA is to hit $1,000 a share, I don't think the top's in for, you know, of course, NVIDIA or SMH, and I don't think that the bottom is in necessarily for SOXS. So... I mean, 286 down to 273. Hopefully that's the bottom. But if not, maybe 256 extension from this Fibonacci retracement. I wouldn't be surprised. And I wonder, let's see if we can do a measurement from, just out of curiosity. So from this low here down to there, that represents 30 34%. And so let's say it's 33%, so a third of that is around 11. And so we go from the low here up to, that's 8%. Is that, yeah. Is that, what did I just do? No, I did it from Oh, yes, yes, this is what I wanted to do. 33, okay, so, I don't know, um, so it's 33, 34% from that low, that high. So from this low, if I were to bring this up to like 11%, that would be forming a double top. NVIDIA, let's see, just doing some kind of comparisons. Um, so I'm just going to do a measurement from up here to down here, approximately 11% down. What did NVIDIA do from here? About the same. I mean, it did dip lower here, but um, yeah, and so with that being said, maybe from the bottom here, if it goes 11% up, what price would that bring it to? Only here, yeah. I don't know. I think that SOXS could still go lower. I think that it will go lower. So good to still be ready to, to buy more and on dips, get the average down, and, and be patient, wait. <laughs> I think shorting is all about waiting. And then I think uh, Holo is next. And then I'll go over charge point and maybe wrap this up because I've been doing it for an hour and 20 minutes. Okay, so Holo did, does look like it squeezed up a little bit, I imagine, since the last time I talked about it. And so from the low here, to the high, 93% move, so it's pretty nice. And then where has it pulled back to? So from the bottom there to the top, which is a high of 858. I'm not gonna get it exact, so I'll just do it here. And so, doesn't look like it was able to find support. Um, it did briefly at the 786, went up to the 618. Same here, 618 to 50. But now, 
444. And so with that being said, I mean, it might very well um, continue lower. 444, and then this is 145, okay. And yeah, let's see, I think I should have yeah, the extension, the 1618 is at a price of $1.88. That seems a little extreme. But, but yeah, this move, I think it's probably coming back to 444 and likely to make lower lows. Um, as price is going down, volume's going down. So that would make me think that it's going to continue going down, right? Or no, if price is going down, I, I'm really bad at this. Well, like, why do I want to resume browsing? I just want to browse. So yeah, if the stock price is going down and the volume's going down, downtrend not supported by volume, exit short, entry upon further sign of reversal. Oh, you can't see it right there. Um, so volume has been decreasing as price has been going down. So maybe it's near, maybe it's going to hit a, form a double bottom at 444, or maybe it's forming a higher low. Um, RSI is like kind of flat, so that's like weak uh, bullish divergence. So yeah, I mean maybe this is ready to, for another run, but maybe not. Because yeah, I mean this over here, this is a daily. I mean, did this have like a little baby squeeze before the big squeeze? Yeah, I guess if it doesn't close below the low of Friday, 460 over the course of the next week, maybe the bottom's in, and then it's going to move higher. But yeah, I'd look for closes below these wick lows, which is one 460. Yeah, and then so now I think I just see one more person here. Uh, so I might go over charge point and then wrap this up unless there are any last minute requests. All right, so charge point, yeah. I've got to go over this. So I had put out a video I mean, actually, I might start this like I'm doing a normal video uh, because I need to put out a video on ChargePoint just to follow up on it. Hey, what's up? Actually, I might, before I do that, I might delete this line. Hey, what's up? Welcome to DGen Ed. That's degenerative education, meaning none of this is financial advice. Just me having fun looking at charts like the chart behind me, which is of ChargePoint, ticker symbol CHPT. And so here we are looking on the daily time frame. I am recording this on Sunday, March 24th in the evening. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to follow up on last week's video. I did point out that it looked like following this downtrend, we had a bear flag here continuation down, I mistakenly assumed this was a bear flag and that price would go lower. But what I failed to recognize was all of these giant wicks to the downside. I was looking at the chart and it got me thinking that, you know, just like how uh, recently, you know, I've been able to call some tops with natural gas because I'd see sideways consolidation and then wicks to the upside which you could view as topping tails. And 
with those topping tails, you get a lot of sellers uh, whenever price goes up. And then so price drops back down. You can't get new higher closes. And so the exact same thing happens on the bottom. Uh, when you do have sideways consolidation, if you have these bottoming tails, these big tails coming to the downside and then closing in the upper half or ideally upper quarter of the trading for that day, that suggests that buyers are stepping in. Every single time the price drops below $1.68, buyers are snatching up shares. And so I should have recognized that and noted that while we do see the down move and the sideways consolidation, which I would think is a bear flag, because we have these wicks to the downside that are massive, buyers are stepping in. This is not a bear flag. This is a bottoming signal, just like seeing those wicks at the top. It's a topping signal, and that's exactly what we got. But what we did get is a retrace up to the scene of the crime this uptrending purple line, which I view as possibly being a head and shoulders pattern that broke, and then we moved back to that neckline, the scene of the crime, and got rejected there, hitting a high on Thursday, March 21st, of $1.92, being just below that uptrending level, and then on Friday, going down almost 8% on the day, pulling back to that 1618 extension from this retracement at a price of $1.71.3, hitting a low on Friday of $1.72. And so that level also coinciding with the 786 from this orange retracement here. And so I do think that, you know, it is not terribly surprising to be seeing this. And what I could see is a continuation to the downside. This was a fake out bear flag that was not actually a bear flag. It faked some of us out, it faked me out. I didn't think price was gonna be going up like this. I thought it was gonna be going down, but now that we've pulled back, really, I mean, we've pulled back to the scene of the crime down here, because we broke above this level, I think it's going to be pretty important to see how we respect 171 if we're able to get closes above that, if we're able to bounce back. But yeah, I mean, we just, all of the gains that we got following me pointing out that bear flag, all of the gains that we saw on the 20th going up 7%, all of that was returned, you know, on Friday. So yeah, I mean, I think that it's, it's, um, it's significant that we were rejected from this level. But I do think that, you know, there is some hope that we are, you know, now above these levels we were trading below before. So maybe that's good. But, you know, I just wanted to point out why this was not a bear flag and why, you know, in the future we might be able to tell or distinguish this from a true bear flag. And that's because of these giant wicks to the downside suggesting that buyers are stepping in. So, yeah, hopefully we are closing uh, over the course of the next week above 171, 172. And if we do, though, since we are consolidating following this red candle, that could very well be a bear flag, in fact. So look for the wicks. Are they sticking up to the top? That could be suggesting a topping signal and that it's going to go down. Are those wicks sticking down uh, like they were over here? Do we see tails to all of these candles? That is a bottoming signal. So very good to be paying attention to that over the course of the next week. I, of course, want ChargePoint to be going higher, but I am preparing myself uh, for, I think, you know, 152, 150. If that does happen, I want to be ready for it. If it doesn't happen, I'm a happy shareholder, and, you know, I want this to be going up super high. So we'll just have to wait and see. But, you know, those are just my thoughts. If you found them helpful, make sure you like the video, share your thoughts in the comments down below, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks a lot for watching. All right. And, uh, yeah, thanks for um, paying attention to me while I did that little recording. I'll put out a video on ChargePoint based on that tomorrow, and I will also do the same thing with Applied Digital, which I believe is the first ticker that I went over this stream. So kind of full circle going over these, uh, you know, tickers that I needed to go over. Um but yeah, since I don't see any more requests, I will probably uh, close this down. Thank you so much for hanging out. 
Uh, since I did just put up the like and subscribe thing, I won't do that again. Won't put you through that. Uh, but yeah, I will uh, perhaps before I go to bed, I'll probably get started on it, but I'll probably finish with uh, putting timestamps on this tomorrow and I will get out the applied digital and charge point videos soon, uh, probably tomorrow. And I will also be doing a Biora video, Biora video that will be a new recording. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much for joining. Uh, if somebody did just join now, if I'll take a last minute request if you got one, but I was planning on signing off. And I will be putting timestamps to all the tickers that I went over. And uh, we'll be putting out a video from this stream on Applied Digital as well as ChargePoint. Maybe others if I have time, but also putting, putting out a video tomorrow on Biora Therapeutics before the earnings call. And um, yeah, and also GameStop has earnings on uh, Tuesday as well. Uh, so maybe that would be another uh, interesting uh, one to cover. But unfortunately, I'd have to do it after the fact because I'm at work during the call. But anyways, it's been fun hanging out. Hope you all have a great start to the week. I have a short week, actually. I don't have to be at work on Friday, so I'm excited about that. Uh, but yeah, thanks for hanging out. Have a great rest of your Sunday, and I will see you guys in the next stream, next video. Looking forward to it. All right, so take care, guys.